Hi folks, hope you're okay today. I'm going to continue my series on reading the Quran. Uh, my name is Jason Burns Preacher dot com. Uh, sorry, my name is Jason, and my website is Jason Burns Preacher dot com. So we're reading the Quran now. I want to, if I put a, a statement right, it, I've been corrected. So forgive me. So um, if if I have been wrong. Uh, someone said I said the Battle of uh, Badar was 424. If I said that, I apologise. It's sometimes I'm a bit dyslexic or a bit tired, and I might misread something. But 624 was the Battle of Badar. Uh, the pagans and Meccans were defeated by the Muslims, and I made that point that uh, Muhammad was uh, a person involved in war. So if I've made a, uh, a mistake there, I stand corrected, but that's probably because I'm tired or I've misread it. Um, so anyhow, let's go on. Uh, so I'm just reading the Quran with an open mind, and um, it's totally not convincing me. I am not convinced at all that this is the Word of God. To me, this is the production of men who've edited it. It, 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 it is in no way the Word of God. Anybody who believes this is the Word of God are 100% delusional. This is not the Word of God. I say that with respect, as a, in the sense that, you know, I, I respect Muslims, I respect uh, where they're coming from, but intellectually, looking at things from an intellectual point of view, this is not the Word of God. So, if you look at Surah 4, uh, Al Nisa, woman, uh, verse 3, it says, If you fear that you cannot deal fairly with orphan girls, you may marry women of your choice, two or three or four, but if you fear that you might not be able to treat them with equal fairness, then only one. But notice here, uh, it's saying that you can only maximally marry four. Interesting that Muhammad had more than four. So Muhammad could not keep the standard of his own Quran. Verse 11, concerning your children, God enjoins you that a male shall receive a share equivalent to that of two females. So there's a gross rampant sexism there. That's in Surah 4, uh, verse 11. Uh, verse 15, if any of your women commit fornication, call in four male witness from among yourselves against them. If they've testified to their guilt, confine them to the house until death releases them, until God gives them another way out. If two men commit a like abomination, punish them both. If they repent and mend their ways, Leave them alone. God is forgiving and merciful. So, if any of your women commit fornication, call in four male witnesses from among yourselves against them. If they testify to the guilt, confine them to the house until death releases them or until God gives them another way out. If two men commit like abomination, punish them both. If they repent, and mend their ways, leave them alone, God is forgiving. So the punishment for gay men is not as stringent it's not even clear if it's gay men. If two men commit a like abomination, punish them both. It seems to be talking about gay men. But God understands to accept repentance only from those who do evil out of ignorance and those who repent soon after. So it says it, God turns and shows mercy, but it contradicts itself because it's not showing mercy to the woman who's committed fornication. Uh, 4.24 Also, forbidden are married women except those who have passed into your hands as prisoners of war, this is a commandment of God to you. All women other than these are lawful 
all women other than these are lawful to you, provided you seek them with your wealth in honest wedlock, not in fornication. When you consummate your marriage with them, give the dowers due to them, and there is no sin for you in what you do by mutual agreement after the fixing of the dower. God is all-knowing and wise. If any of you cannot afford to marry a free believing woman, let him marry one of his believing maids whom he possesses. So also forbidden are married women, except those who have passed into your hands as prisoners of war. So basically there, you, can, you can't marry married women, but you can marry married women who are prisoners of war. This is not a book of God. I'm sorry to say. Uh, Surah 4, uh, 36. Worship God and do not associate ship partners with him. Be good to your parents. Now, it's interesting to know that verse 36, worship God and do not associate ship partners with him. I've looked up verses um, where it talks about I have no partners and then I've looked at Bakari and it's interesting that when Muhammad went to a city to take over a city that was Christian he would basically say he would basically state these kind of statements if you desist from associating partners with God we will be merciful to you so actually these verses about don't associate partners with God were very uh, political in destroying other cultures. In other words, if you don't do as we say, we will kill you, we will pillage your cities. Uh, so the, these statements, worship God and do not associate partners, are not just theological, they are political. We have prepared, verse uh, 37, we prepared a humiliating punishment for those who deny the truth and God does not like those who spend their wealth for the sake of ostentation who do not believe in God or the last day whosoever has Satan as his companion as an evil companion what harm could befall them if they believe in God and the last day and spend out what does God does not wrong anyone by as much as a grain's weight if there be a good deed he will repay twofold and will bestow out of his own bounty at any men's reward. What will they do when we bring a witness from each community and bring you as a witness against these people? On that day, those who were bent on denying the truth and disobeyed the messenger will wish that the earth were made level above them. They will not be able to hide anything from God. Believers, do not approach your prayers when you are drunk until you understand what you say or when you are in a state of impurity. I thought you're not supposed to be allowed to drink alcohol. So he's saying here, don't don't come to prayer drunk. See, there's contradictions everywhere in this book. It's just full of contradictions. Sort of 4, 47, all oh, people of the book believe in what we have sent down. Verse 48, God will not forgive anyone for associating something with him while he will forgive whoever he wishes for anything beside that whosoever ascribes parts to God is guilty of a monstrous sin so it contradicts itself in the previous verse it says God will it says uh, time and time again that God will forgive sin God will forgive sin but now it's saying he won't forgive associating partners so it, again it's contradicting itself Fighting great reward, so 474, let those who would exchange life of this world for the hereafter fight for the cause of God. And it, and it glorifies fighting. Uh, so 4104, do not relent in the pursuit of the enemy. In other words, you go after that enemy, keep going after them until you've absolutely destroyed them. Uh, Surah verse 167 those who are bent on denying the truth not turning others away from the path of God and strayed far from the path God will not forgive those who deny the truth and act wrongfully nor will he guide them uh, Surah 4 163 we have sent revelation 
uh, to you, Prophet, as we did to Noah and the prophets who came after him, to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac and Jacob, tribes, to Jesus, Job. We give the Psalms. We have told you about some messages sent previously. And this is one of the disingenuousnesses about Muslims. They know that we can corner them with an argument saying that the Quran says we're to read the Word of God and that, uh, that the Old Testament and New Testament. So the Muslims will say, oh, 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 well, the India was not a word. And it's so intellectually dishonest. The messengers were given not just messages, they were given the Word of God. Um, Again, uh, sexism. If there are brothers and sisters, the share of each male shall be that of two females. That's sexism again. So, the reason why Muslims don't want to talk about the Quran and attack the Bible is because this is basically uh, a pack of lies. I'm sorry to say, this is not the Word of God. This is the inventions of men, uh, it is it is totally a, a dishonest and immoral book. That's my view of the Quran so far. And I'm nearly halfway through it and it doesn't convince me in any shape or form. When you've read the Bible and seen the supremacy of the Bible, the beauty of the Bible, the wonder of the Bible, the glory of the Bible, this book is not God's book, it, it, it's a book of the devil because the devil's inspired this book it, because it denies Christ, it denies who he is, it denies salvation, it denies the gospel and so we'll read uh, we'll read uh, a passage Galatians chapter 1 it says uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel which is really no gospel at all Evidently some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let him be eternally condemned. And as we have already said, so now I say again, if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than that which you have accepted, let him be eternally condemned. So this, gos this, this gospel in here is being denied by this. This says a guy uh, had an angel give him a revelation and it's a pack of lies, it's not the truth. This says that if you, an angel comes to you and says it's, that you've had a revelation from that angel and it denies this book, let him be accursed. This denies this book. So Paul puts a curse on the author of this book. And when, when I read this book, I feel fed, I feel spiritually alive, I feel invigorated, I feel renewed and strengthened, I feel close to God. When I read this book, it leaves me dead, it leaves me cold because there's no life in it, there's no power in it. It's a dead book. It's a dead book, my friends. This is alive, this has power. And the proof of the fact that this is a dead book is because you Muslims... Uh, especially in Hyde Park, you spend hours and hours attacking this book and you don't spend any time talking about this book. If your book is so powerful, if your book is so great, why don't you talk about it much? You don't. When you're at Hyde Park, you spend m your time attacking this book and that's proof that this is the Word of God and this is just a pack of lies. Thank you.